Over the last few videos, we discussed a number of things from caffeine's impact on lifting performance as measured by total repetitions lifted to the possible variability between people based on a genetic anomaly in the liver of many people down to the amount of caffeine shown to be effective. In this video, I'd like to put it all together for you, including a few nuances that you might have missed that could be important. Beyond that, however, this brand isn't data Nick, it's physionic. So we'll delve into the mechanistic explanations for why caffeine has this positive effect. If that smooths your coffee, then let's dive in. And yeah, I totally made that last line up. It's not an actual expression. Across two studies, we saw consistent results that caffeine improves lifting performance at a dose as high as five milligrams per kilogram of body weight. But we even saw that that persists at lower doses of three milligrams per kilogram. So you don't have to be chugging a gallon of coffee before your workout to experience a benefit, unless, well, that's part of your routine. Wake up, drowning coffee, hey, more power to you. In terms of the amount of benefit, this is where I feel I need to add some nuance that may have escaped in the previous videos. While the acute benefit of caffeine within a lifting session led to more repetitions accomplished per exercise, there are two details on either side of that fact that are important. If we get more granular, we saw that caffeine's effects are limited to the first set of an exercise. Normally, we don't simply do one set of an exercise, we'll do numerous sets. Well, according to the data that we saw, that caffeine benefit only comes through for the first set. Ultimately, that still translates into a better payout, but it's good to know so that we don't have this expectation that caffeine is going to supercharge everything. As the muscles get worn out, caffeine has less effect. However, the caffeine boost does persist across multiple exercises, so it isn't as if you have to choose your first exercise wisely. It will help you on the bench press on the first set, then for the leg press on the first set, and so on. Okay, the second detail is that this effect isn't just about performance. Notably, I chose not to cover several other aspects of performance that are also improved by caffeine because I wanted to focus on the one that would deliver the greatest muscle gains, volume. So volume being the total amount of weight lifted per set amount of time, like per session or per week, etc. If you can lift more every session, even if it's only one repetition per exercise, that will translate into more muscle signals for growth. So yes, caffeine increases the potential for muscle growth through its action on increasing the total amount lifted over weeks, months, years. Next, we discuss the effect a particular gene mutation in the body can label individuals as fast or slow metabolizers of caffeine. I'll leave the details for that video if you're interested, but ultimately measuring the difference between fast and slow metabolizers of caffeine, there seems to be no appreciable difference. So regardless of if you metabolize caffeine quickly or slowly, you'll experience the same benefit to your lifting performance. If your next question is if the effects wear off, I'd venture no, because the studies we investigated were in individuals that, although they didn't consume a ton, did consume caffeine on a regular basis. Now, finally, let's ask the question every physiologist wants to know, and I'm knighting you as an honorary physiologist for the moment. How is caffeine having these effects? What's the mechanism? When we consume caffeine, it enters our bloodstream and spreads out across our cardiovascular system. In doing so, it has two principal actions, although there are certainly more. We'll discuss two major ones here. One, caffeine binds the adrenal glands, promoting the release of epinephrine. Epinephrine will then circulate through the bloodstream and bind a variety of cells, like muscle cells, causing changes in the signaling within the cells to achieve more force generation. Second, caffeine blocks the ability for adenosine molecules to bind to their targets. Let's unpack that. Adenosine is a molecule produced throughout the day, and it binds to the exterior of your cells. When it does that, it reduces alertness, makes us sleepier, and can increase our experience of pain. Caffeine, coincidentally, fits into the same receptor as the adenosine molecule, so it displaces the adenosine molecule or blocks the adenosine from the receptor. This changes the effect on the cells. 
So the caffeine molecule inhibits drowsiness, making us more alert and reduces our perception of pain. Taken together, if you are training with no caffeine, you will potentially have less epinephrine and more active adenosine in your system. Both of these lead to reduced muscle contraction, less motivation, and reduced pain tolerance. Once caffeine is in your bloodstream, all those effects are reversed. As always, there's far more detail and nuance to be had when discussing the physiological underpinnings, but I think this offers a great platform for understanding why caffeine has the effects that it does on lifting performance. With that, I welcome you to hop on over to another video of mine, and I'd like to thank you for your time and attention. I sincerely hope that I have the pleasure of speaking with you in the near future again. Bye.